Hello guys. So um, today I'm going to be walking us through a very very important um, statistical technique in applied statistics, and the title is hypothesis testing. So I'm going to be showing us some of the applications of um, hypothesis testing. I'm going to be um, defining what it is, and um, and then I'll give some some examples to show what it actually uh, meant to do. So this video will actually be in two parts. So I'm going to do now uh, the one sample uh, problem on hypothesis testing. Then later on, I'm going to do the two sample, um, this two sample tests or the two sample problem on the hypothesis testing. So um, okay, so let's go. So now um, basically, I'm going to explain what hypothesis is. Hypothesis is just um, under in, in um, statistics. Hypothesis is a statistical guess. It's something that um, someone says on the population. Um, just a guess on the population. For example, let's say um, someone says now that um, the average salary um, lecturers earn at the um, University of Harvard is um, $30,000. So it's just an hypothesis on on the population, on the whole lecturer. So it has not been subjected to uh, confirmation. We've not confirmed it. Maybe this is true or false. So now testing. Testing is actually telling us that, okay, the hypothesis that someone has said on the population, that, that somebody has said or made on the population, you need to test it. You need to know. We need to know maybe it is true or false. Can we take that hypothesis? Can we take it in or not? So for us to do the testing, you need to. You need to. Um, there are some procedures that you need to um, go about. So, okay. So now we have five basic pr procedures when we are trying to test hypothesis that has been made on the population. So number one is we set up two contradictory um, hypotheses, which is the null and the alternative hypothesis. We all understand what the null hypothesis means. The, the null hypothesis is what is actually set up for the primary purpose of rejection. It has been set up on the population for the primary purpose of rejection, while the alternative hypothesis is the one that counters um, um, the null hypothesis. For example, someone says, okay, the average salary that um, lecturers earn at the University of Harvard is actually um, $30,000. That is the null hypothesis. Now, the alternative hypothesis can be that, okay, what they earn is actually higher than $30,000. So, can you see? Now, number two, we're going to collect sample data. For us to confirm, we need to collect sample from the population. We can collect like 10 or 20, depending on the size. But we need to remember that the higher um, the sample size, the better our estimate or the better our result will be. So we are going to collect sample. Then three, we need to determine the correct distribution. We have two major distributions that we use under um, hypothesis testing. We have the T distribution and the Z distribution. Now, we need to know, is it are we using T distribution or Z distribution? Now, in a scenario, Whereby, um, um, whereby we have a problem, we have a problem, and in that problem, the population standard deviation is known. Yes, so immediately we we we, we can identify in the question that this okay this is okay this is our population standard deviation, then it means we can use the Z uh, distribution. But if the population standard deviation is not known, that is sigma then we can go ahead and use the t-distribution. Another situation whereby we can use these two tests is if the sample size, if our sample size is actually greater than or equals to 30, then we can use the z-distribution. Um, uh, okay, so then for we need to analyze the data. We need to analyze the data. We need to use some formulas. T-distribution has its own formula. Um, same thing as the z-distribution. So then we need to make a decision on the null hypothesis and draw a meaningful conclusion in uh, the null hypothesis is it true or false can we take it in or we can take it in so 
after the analysis we need to know we need to make a conclusion then um, so we are going to go over um, an example now and um, okay so okay before we go over the example we have errors in hypothesis tests and there are two basic errors two major errors remember that statistics is not 100 percent accurate Yes, I'm going to repeat myself. Nothing in statistics is actually 100% accurate. So remember that any analysis you're doing in um, statistics or any um, application of statistics you're using, you can actually um, arrive at 100%. Um, your result cannot be 100% accurate. It will actually get you closer to precision or something closer to accuracy, but it can be 100% accurate. So the type one error is um, the error committed when um, they are rejecting um, the null hypothesis that is actually true. So when your hypothesis, the null hypothesis is actually true and you are rejecting it, that is type 1 error. Okay? Then type 2 error is, is an error committed when you are actually accepting a false uh, null hypothesis. So when your hypothesis is actually, the null hypothesis is actually false and you are still accepting it, that is type 2 error. Meanwhile, we have to take note that type 2 error is actually the um, the greatest error. It's actually the one that has the greatest consequence. Because let me take for example now. You want to employ a teacher to your school. And you know that after doing and um, conducting an interview, you discover that this teacher is not qualified to take the position. But you are still giving the teacher the job. So you are accepting a false uh, null hypothesis. Okay? So... So, one sample test. Now, under hypothesis test, we have something we call one sample test and two sample tests. Now, under one sample test, I also call it a one sample problem. Okay? So, um, it's actually a problem that happens or a test that happens within a school. For example, you're actually looking at a problem within one school. But if it is two sample tests, you're actually comparing two schools. Let's say, for example, you're comparing two schools. You're comparing... Um, the average salary of two schools or you're comparing teachers in two different schools then um, in such situation under two sample tests your two you, you we are going to be having um, two sample sizes we are going to be having um, two um, sample means we are going to be having two um, sample variances then we are also going to be having some other things that are two two so but under one sample test you only have um, the one sample mean, you have one um, sample um, variance, we have one population standard deviation, and so on. Okay, so these are the two um, distribution. This is the first one, we have the Z distribution test. So this is Z equals to, this is the sample mean X bar minus population mean, okay, divided by sigma. Sigma is the population standard deviation, okay. so. If you have a population, for example, you have a population and you're estimating um, standard deviation from that population, you call it population standard deviation. But if it is a sample, if you're getting, you, est you want to estimate standard deviation from a sample, like uh, 10 samples or 50 samples out of the population, then you have the sample standard deviation. So this is the hen, hen is the sample size. Do we, do, so do we understand? N is the sample size. Now, we have uh, the one tail test, which is Z alpha. Then we have the two tail test, which is Z alpha um, over two. Now, what is alpha? Alpha is level of significance. Alpha is level of significance, or you can say the probability of committing type one error. Okay, so when you're committing type one error, the probability of committing type one error is alpha. So we also call it level of significance. Okay, so let me explain one tail test and two tail tests. Now, one tail test, when you are trying to, when you have a problem and the the alternative hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis is, is actually telling you that um, something is um, better than something, something is higher than something, or something is less than, or you have another figure that is actually less than what, um, what has been set up. In the null hypothesis then you have a wanted test but if um, the problem is saying that okay we should test for differences you should test for differences or or um, 
what has been set up on the null hypothesis is actually not true then you have a two tail test okay so here your alpha will be divided by two so this uh, z alpha is, uh, is actually used um is that is also called the critical region okay is actually is also called the, crit uh, the the critical region it actually help us to um, make conclusions yes okay so so this is the t distribution so the only difference between the z and the t distribution is um, the sigma can you see so when your sigma is known which is the population standard deviation you're using the z test but if um the the population standard deviation is not known you are using your sample uh, standard deviation which is s okay then you have um for same thing you have a critical region for t test you have t alpha n minus one okay so this is for one tail test so the n i told you already the, the n stand for the number of sample size or sample size then this is for the two t test okay so let's pick an example all right okay so we have it that student believe that the mean score on their first statistic test is 20 marks okay so this is what actually student believe they believe um you know the whole student is actually a population and the student believe that okay the mean score on their first statistics test is actually um, 20 marks okay so that is the null hypothesis um, hypothesis that has been set up on the on the population so that is the null hypothesis okay a statistic instructor okay now the statistics instructor is the teacher the one that takes um, the person that teaches the, the, um, the statistics okay things the mean score is higher than 20 so this is the alternate hypothesis the student believe their test was actually 20 marks everybody actually got 20 marks why the instructor thinks that no they actually got higher than uh, 20 marks okay so this is the alternative hypothesis okay so for him to confirm what the student have said for this lecturer or for the instructor to confirm what the um, teacher have said he needs to sample um, 10 students you can let's go back to the procedures okay you can see you need you need to collect sample data for for you to test or confirm whether the hypothesis that has been set up on the null hypothesis is true or false you need to collect sample data then analyze that data okay so so we sample 10 students so 10 is the sample size which is n and obtains this course 20 20 23 up to 20 do we understand then it performs a hypothesis test using five percent level of significance okay the data assumed to be from a normal distribution all right so now the first thing to do under the procedure we need to set up two contradictory hypotheses so the first one which is h not the null hypothesis is set up on the on the population mean the two are set up on the population mean so the first one will have to be equals to um, 20 okay and then um, for this one the alternative hypothesis is what um, the lecturer thinks um, the lecturer actually believes or the instructor believes that is actually higher than 20 so we have um, greater than 20 okay so greater than 20 20 max all right so that is the first step then the first step you need to collect sample data so we already know the um, the population mean so this is the mean the population mean is uh, 20 okay so the population mean is actually 20 okay then the sample um, so because now now if you look at the question very well we are not given um, we don't know the population standard deviation so we are just only given the data so once you're given the data and you are trying to compute standard deviation from that data it means you're using a t distribution test all right so so this is s okay so this is s is um, sample of standard deviation so but when you have s square 
then that changes to sample variance okay so we don't know it all right so um the how far given to us level of significance which is the probability of um, committing a type 1 error is actually 0 0.05 that's five percent all right okay so with the sample mean here we don't know okay then the the, the sample size is actually 10 all right okay so let's go to um, let's use the Excel to compute the sample um, standard deviation and the sample mean okay so this is the Excel so we need to compute the mean which is sample mean all right then we need to compute um, sample standard deviation so let me just represent it with xd all right so just highlight your your data then you can go to uh, formulas so okay so the sample mean is actually 20.8 so let's go over the um the sample standard deviation all right okay okay so this is for sample so we're going to highlight all right very good so um so let me see in two decimal please let me put the sun uh, the sample standard deviation in two decimal please so this is 2.49 okay okay 2.49 all right so now we know our x bar which is sample mean 20.8 and the sample um standard deviation is um for point um 2.49 All right okay so um um so looking at the formula for sample standard deviation if you if you want to do it manually using the formula so you have the square root of summation i ranges from 1 to n x i minus x bar all squared minus divided by n minus 1 so this is your formula for sample standard deviation we have n minus 1 because it's a sample so if you if if you are actually dealing with the population, you are going to have the denominator. We have to be just be only uh, n, so it will be n, not n minus one. Okay. So the next thing to do. So we have the formula. The correct distribution is still distribution. So what do we do? We need to um, we need to um, analyze the data using this formula. Okay. And the, the question is actually, the problem is actually a one tail test because the alternative hypothesis is actually telling us that um, the instructor believes that the mean score is actually higher. So I told you before, when you have, um, when the alternative hypothesis uh, is actually saying something is higher than the um, null hypothesis or is better or is more efficient or is less than or not or um so do you understand okay so so let's calculate this t so this t i call it um the t calculated value because we we are, we are calculating we are getting it from a formula all right so so hen let me put hen n is 10 all right Okay, and the population mean the population mean is um, 20. All right, okay. So let me get the value of t. So you have t equals to okay. So I'm going to have um, the sample mean. All right, minus. Um, population mean okay divided by all right divided by um, the sample standard deviation okay let me put divided also here okay 
okay because the formula is actually um, x bar minus population mean divided by s divided by square root of n okay then um, divided by square root square root of n which is 10 okay so um, the t value here is um, in one decimal place this is 1.02 okay all right so this is one point um, 1.02 all right so 1.02 so I'm going to write 1.02 here equals to one point zero two to two decimal place all right so this t alpha n minus one i already said is a critical region it actually help us it will help us to uh, make a decision so you can check this out on the table or you use excel to compute p value which is probability value so if i'm using um, um the table so i'll have something like this so the t calculated value is 1.1.02 okay so the t um tabulated value is t alpha n minus one so how far is 0 0.05 that has been given to us and uh, from the question or from the problem then n is 10 minus 1 so this is n minus 1 10 minus 1 so this is t 0 0.05 comma 9 so this 9 is what we call the degree of freedom so we are going to look at the t table this is chi square okay so we are looking at 9 under 0 0.05 so this is 0 0.05 so we have 1.833 okay so 1.833 all right okay now um now the decision is um we need to reject to make a decision so the decision is actually what will guide us to actually draw our conclusion so reject um, H naught, which is a null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis if um, the T calculated is actually greater than T um, tabulated. All right. Otherwise. accept it right so if um the t calculated which we actually um derived from the formula if it's greater than what we got from the table it actually means we are going to reject the null hypothesis and if you are rejecting the null hypothesis we will be accepting the alternative hypothesis all right okay okay so we'll conclusion All right so since um since t calculated which is 1.02 all right is actually less than uh, the t tabulated which is 1.83 okay Um, so since t calculated is actually less than um, t tabulated we are not going to reject the null hypothesis we are going to accept it we accept the null hypothesis and conclude that okay and conclude that um, based on the sample data based on the sample data okay so if we are accepting the null hypothesis we are saying that um, what the what the student actually said was actually true that 
all of them, most of them actually got, the population of the student actually got 20 marks in the test. Okay. So based on the data, um, the mean score of the student, um, of the student's statistic tests is 20 max all right okay so um, as you can see this is the conclusion we've concluded we actually tested um, the hypothesis and we, we came to realize that what the actual what the students actually believed was actually um, true but well, you know this is actually um, based on the on the sample so this is not 100% accurate but to guide us or get us closer to um, accuracy and help us to draw um, better decisions or make better decisions all right so let me try and show you how to compute the p-value okay so you have the t distribution we are going to use the t distribution okay so the value of x which is our value of um, the t calculator this is 1.02 then the degree of freedom is actually 9 all right then we're actually looking at one tail test can you see so you have option of choosing either one tail or two tail test so this is one all right so as you can see this is p value and to make a decision using p value so once your p value is less than 0 0.05 all right we are going to reject the null hypothesis but can you see this is actually greater than 0 0.05 so it means we can't uh, reject the null, the null hypothesis we have to accept it all right okay guys so um thank you that's all on um, hypothesis testing one sample test and um, watch out for my other videos i'm going to show you uh, maybe take an example on the um, on, on the z distribution test okay so thank you guys make sure you subscribe to my channel stay blessed